Welcome to God's View Today, where the view is different from his perspective. My name is Phyllis Tarbox, and I'm here with my co-host Kathleen Peck and mm -hmm. Susan Ward. And we have a very special show for you today because we have our local disc jockey, Pete O'Shea, from WTIS, 11.10 a.m. He does the drive time from 3 to 6 daily. And um, we're, we're very glad to have you here with us today, Pete. It's an honor to be here. I'm so excited to be here with you, you guys. It's really nice. Thank yeah. you for having me. No, we're, we're excited because we know this is going to be a grand party. This is our finale show. Uh, for our first season, and we have a live audience here with us. So, yes, yeah, the live audience. <laughs> so it's a big, a little bit of a party in a box we're going to have with Pete today. You know, <laughs> he, that probably describes him fairly well. <laughs> but I know that Kathleen, you do we are have enough bail money for this? Do we have bail? Money? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We um. We just, we've all been on your show, I think, at one time or another. Yes, so everybody guess, here at this table has been on my show. Yeah, yes, you have. He's an equal opportunity uh, host. And you were just on his show recently to talk about a certain event that was coming, and somehow or another you got transitioned off that event to the things that go on at the Healing House, which engaged Pete's uh, interest, yes. interest in the Healing House, and somehow or another he ended up with you there, so... Yeah, um, tell us a little bit well, about that. I actually live there now. I actually yeah, 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 <laughs> area they let me sleep in as a cop, and it's not bad. Because there's yeah. a, lot, a yeah. lot of work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah but you're it. so much better. Yeah, I, oh, I, yes, I am. I'm so much so better. so much better. Like a big weight is off my chest, literally, okay? And I feel a million times better. I really, mm -hmm. really do. Uh, because when, you, when we were interviewing you that day, yeah. again, the other guest was late, so we started talking instead about what you do. And everything you're saying, I'm going, wait, that's me. I, mm -hmm. I, I need that. I got to have that. Can I get that? Mm -hmm. And so that was, a, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. came running. I wanted it you so bad. You came running. So we invited you to the Healing House. We had a good good time praying with you. And Well, I wouldn't say it was a good time. <laughs> Let's not get fair. It was a good time afterwards. Was, this is the party in a box. That was not a party in a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But it worked. Okay, let's go that way. All right, okay, it worked. It worked, right? <laughs> yeah. Fun though? No. No. <laughs> well, we had fun. Oh yeah, yeah, you had fun. You guys were like, oh, we've got Pete O'Shea yeah, on there. You guys had fun. We're gonna do some you shake those demons fun. out of it. <laughs> shake some demons out of this boy. I was, I'm honest, it was painful for me, but you guys had fun. I'm glad you. I'm happy for hey, you. And you were smiling when you I, left. When I, oh, when I left, I was thrilled. I was All smiling, right. and again, it really felt, you know, I felt 10, 20 pounds lighter. I felt like that weight that had been on me for who knows how long, decades, had, was was lifted off, no doubt about it. I hear that all the time from clients when decades. they come in, that it feels like a weight just got lifted off of them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say it's, it was like an emotional workout. It really was. And you know, and I'm constantly fighting with my weight anyhow. I got on the scale yesterday, and the scale said, well, why don't you please get off? <laughs> <laughs> and so to be able to lose 20 pounds and it didn't cost me nothing, hey, thanks, Kathleen. Yeah, yeah that's such a thing. <laughs> Uh, did we mention that he was a comedian? No. 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 <laughs> so if you need a comedian for any of your events, Pete O'Shea, you know where to contact him. Yeah. But you, you kind of had the, uh, we gave you the, the full treatment at the Healing House. We actually started with a birth assignment yeah. with you, which you, you agreed with that there had been an assignment. I remember we called out um, sabotage that, and perversion and even death was followed you from birth. Hmm. You, and, and we could sense that as soon as you guys began, uh -huh. you know, and, and it was very palpable. Mm -hmm. But, we, you know, again, once you have that desire to want a gun and follow what you guys it, say, it, and, it, yeah. It, it, it really did go. Um, yeah. I know that you were talking about cycles of, cycles of sabotage in your life. You just, every time you get something going, it would fall apart, right? At the, right, right before it was supposed to break through, it fall apart. Yes, and if it wasn't self-sabotage with someone else, mm -hmm. and it, it was a constant cycle of that, of, of okay, get to the almost to the top of the mountain, and then come crashing back mm -hmm. down again, mm -hmm. constantly over and over again in the loop, you know, yeah. and you can't understand why that's happening. You don't know wh why. Why is this happening to me? That's right. You know, but again, it was demonic. Now, mm -hmm. I, now I understand it thanks mm -hmm. to you guys. I didn't understand it. To me, you know, demonic presence was something you see in a movie. It doesn't happen to me. It happens to somebody else. It's yeah. a movie, right? It's mm -hmm. not real. Mm -hmm. But it is real. It's very, very real. And, and you could feel it. And you guys walked me through the steps of it. You know, and we were there for 19 days, by the way. Was it 40? Nobody slept. Nobody slept. It was round the clock. They were, they were feeding me through a tube. It was, it was, and I was doing this the whole time. And, 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 and it was great. Uh, it really worked too. No, we no, no. 
Now, you guys have been watching us for 22 shows yes, now. Yes. You know that's not that's I'm, you're kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, just, kidding. Just, I'm just seeing another region here. Yeah. <laughs> more, work <to> <laughs> more work to be done. Comedy <laughs> region. We're not done yet. Yeah. Uh, as we talk to you, I just we noticed some patterns of behavior as well, and that um, uh, we discovered that you were also a captive in the land of the jackals. I don't know if you actually remember that title, yeah. But we did walk you through that, and you could sense the. Tell me, did, did you sense anything? Just give us your testimony. I could sense a predator. I mm -hmm. could sense something constantly chasing me, pushing mm -hmm. me, uh, forcing me into fear forcing me into fear. I want you to make sure you understand what I'm saying, that forcing me into fear, okay? And it was nonstop to the point where it's exhausting, where you cannot get away from it, where you cannot avoid it. And it winds up affecting every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life. And it doesn't stop. Yeah, and it's and harassment. It's harassment, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's constant harassment is what it is. Yeah, yeah. so it's jackals after you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, and there were specific, I remember there were specific ones that we actually called out. We called out things like the Lilith and, um, and other uh, uh, spirits that were um, harassing you that were part of that region. And, I, and then we, we did that. We broke some soul ties that you had to break. And then um, we even had you repent which, you know, some people are against that these days, but um, we know that's, that's the door to f total freedom. And uh, when we pulled you out of that land of jackals, it was like, uh, this ref I could feel this refreshing coming over you. And you were actually envisioning um, something that Laverne, who one of our team members saw, that she saw a new vista for you. And it was, you have a new vision, and you were seeing that vision as you were coming out of the land of jackals. Is that right? Yes, but only after the repentance, okay, because uh -huh. that was the key to it. I yes. had to say to, to God, listen, I'm sorry for my part in this too, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to be in that way anymore. Mm. That's what repentance is, guys and girls. It's not just saying you're sorry. It's mm -hmm. saying I'm going to change. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk the other direction from where I was. And that's only the time then that the blessings and, and, and anointings and vision from him can come clear. It's like the TV's all messed up, you can't see it, but then you know you, re, you, know, you recalibrate mm -hmm. it, and now you can see it very clear, okay? If that makes any sense to you guys. That's what was going on in my life, all right? So yes, now I have a clear vision. He showed me exactly what he, he expects me to do now going forward, and I'm gonna have to do it, I'm doing it. Whatever he tells me to go, that's where I'm going, okay? Mm -hmm. I work for God. You know, mm -hmm. someone else might sign the paycheck, but I work for God. Yes, you do. You know, so. And then, so you mentioned earlier too, Kathleen, that free will, mm -hmm. um, God gives us free will, and the same way that forgiveness is a choice, repentance is a choice as well too, but repentance is a big part of healing. That's right. And, and, but there's like also things that get in the way of that, even when you're consciously aware you need to do that. For me, they were anger and arrogance mm -hmm. in equal doses, and when those two things are in the mix, repentance is impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was really mad at God for a really long time for me getting into a car accident when I'm 19 years old and being told to just stay home and don't live, and go on social security and put bubble wrap around yourself if you go have to go out of the house. Wow. Okay, that's what I was told, okay, by a surgeon, who, by the way, I hit him in the head with a bedpan. Was that wrong? Was that, <laughs> right? was that, was that wrong? What, what, what's, part, what, what's part of that testimony? What happened to I was that? in a car accident in 19, I'm sitting still at a light. For the one time in my life, I was minding my own business, and I wasn't getting in any trouble. And the guy slammed into me, and I cut, and I went in the hospital, and the guy, that's what they served me. I had a spondylolisthesis. I know you want to say God bless you when I say that, right? <laughs> and the whole vertebrae came over into the side, and that's what they told me. The, the doctor said I could collapse your spine with my thumb if I wanted wow, to, wow. and you needn't go out anymore. You go on Social Security and stay in the house. A 19-year-old boy is told this, okay? Wow. So I, 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 anger became my de facto position for everything at that point. I was really mad at God. Remember the scene in Forrest Gump when Lieutenant Dan is raging when the mm -hmm. legs first get cut off him, mm -hmm. and he's like, that was me. I was that guy. I was foaming at the mouth mad at God for that. There's no way repentance or his blessings or anything else, forgiveness, anything else can happen when that kind of rage is happening. Mm -hmm. And then combine that with a leap of growth of arrogance. I don't need to repent. There's nothing wrong with me. It's not me. It's, it's your fault. It's your fault. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I know what I'm doing. Those two together make repentance impossible. Mm -hmm. So seeing those, understanding those, you guys bringing those clear to me, seeing the full vision of what I've been doing and who, I, and who was controlling that mm -hmm. made it possible for me to then break that cycle. That's wow. great. 
So you, you actually, that, that's, that scripture about our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritualities and principalities and forces. Yeah, that came real to you that, that you that there were other things outside of yourself causing you to stay bound to these uh, emotions of anger, sure. being, uh, the, being pursued by jackals, the perversion and the death that followed you from birth. We're just still holding you captive. But after that, you know, you, it gave you, I sense it gave you an empowerment to say, no, I recognize you and I'm not going that way anymore. That's exactly what it did. Yeah. It gave me a new perspective. Mm -hmm. I looked at it with a different lens and could now see what was going on, not just in myself, but in others as well. So when people hurt you, when people do things to you mm. and you're mad at them, that's foolish to be mad at them because it's not them who did it. It's the mm -hmm. enemy who did it. The enemy is just using that person to get to you, okay? So when you no longer get mad at that person, when you no longer take it personal, it's a lot easier to deal with life. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier then to deal with your own in, in, in inadequacies because you now can look at it from what's going on. Are they picking on me? No. The enemy's coming after me because I talk about Jesus on the radio that's three right. hours yes. a day and he doesn't want me to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, the enemy hates my everlasting guts and that's fine with me because the feeling is mutual. Okay. Yeah. So, I'd be but, worried if he didn't hit you. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so, but you can now see this in a different way. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, you don't get mired down in that, oh, look at this. I'm done. This is mm -hmm. finished. I'm mm -hmm. done. And I can't get out of this. And you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. You don't look at it that way anymore. And so you can see it for what's really going on. So you can not, see what's really happening. Now you're fighting from a place of victory instead of a place of, oh, I'm, I, of hopelessness. The, the best word I'll use to describe it as well is from a place of peace. Place of peace. From, That's from good. a place That's of peace. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, things have continued to happen after we had no, this. Sure. You know, yeah, life yeah. continues on. Life continues. The enemy still wants to get at you, and it has happened three or four times since we yeah. left you. Yeah. Uh, that again, and the enemy knows too. Oh yeah, you think you got free? I'm coming at you now sevenfold. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come right in. Your, I'm gonna come right in your face. Okay, and he did. But I didn't have to look at it the same way. I was just like, really? That's all you got? That's mm the -hmm. best you could do, you little feckless thug? Beat it. Get out of here. <laughs> okay? I got Jesus on my team. We win. Goodbye. We win. Get out of here. All right. Okay? Good. Whereas before, I would have got all riled up. I'm Irish. I'm from New York. That means I lose my temper sometimes. The hippo hurricane holler comes out. Get out of the way. Well, I'm going to break everything, and then we'll run through the wall, and we'll worry about it later. No. I can stop now, stay at peace, see what's going on. And I didn't lose it. I didn't go nuts when mm -hmm. the attacks came. I just yeah. prayed and kept going. I got you, all my prayer warriors going, yeah. and we kept going. Yeah, you yeah. did. You had the prayer warriors going, and you had that peace, and the God of peace crushes Satan where? Underneath your feet. Amen. So it's a warfare substance he gave you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a fight that they It's a yeah, weapon that I didn't have before. before. Right. I see that sometimes with deliverance, too. I mean, that's the way I describe deliverance, when you're actually delivered from a spirit that's been harassing you or tormenting you. It's, it's like it gives you... It gives you time to see them coming before they're ensnared in your flesh because of some of your sinful choices or things that have happened and you just push that button they push that button and you just react with them a lot of mm -hmm. times you don't even feel what provoked it but mm -hmm. you're auto automatically in that emotional spin mm -hmm. but then once you get through the deliverance piece of it it's like you've got say a 30 second window where you see them coming and you can sit back and go oh i see you now Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning and I mime putting on that full armor of God. That's awesome. I come out of the shower and I put it on and no, because I know He's coming after me mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that before. I couldn't figure that out before, and then I couldn't wonder. I couldn't understand why I kept getting my butt kicked. You know why I wasn't able to mm -hmm. deal with it, or why every interpersonal relationship it was falling apart, and why. You know, I couldn't control my temper or, or my arrogance. It's really hard to be humble when you're this pretty. That's the problem. <laughs> that's, 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 that's one of the problems I run into. LeBron, you know what I'm saying. You're there. You know what I'm saying. It's hot. It's hot. Okay? I, I, look at everybody going, dude, you ain't that pretty. Cut it out. All right. But you now see it from that different way, and you can be ready. You're, you're, it is a battle. If you guys don't think you're in a battle every single day with the enemy, then you're being naive. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then you're being naive. If you want to be naive, have at it. But... I'm not naive anymore. The the, yeah. the 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 glasses are clear now. I can see. Yeah, you know, God told me one time. He said, "Take or be taken, plundered or be plundered." Yeah. And that's the stance I take. You it, know, it's an aggressive. You he, know, he I'm told me. Here's yeah. what God told me just recently: Get out of your own way. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to orchestrate everything that you ask me for and then some, and bless you abundantly, and you keep getting in your own way. Mm. 
and then I got to start all over again because not only do you damage yourself, but you cause tons of collateral damage all over the place. Yeah. It's kind of like ski. I've never skied in my whole life because you got to know your limitations. All right. If I skied, I would break everything and everybody along the way. It would just slide across, and it's the same thing. In my I know this. Okay. All right. I don't do anything unless there's like an ambulance and a room in the intensive care ready just in uh -oh. case. Okay. I don't go any, any kind of physical activity <laughs> until I've called ICU and I know there's a room ready. Okay. Because you got to know your limitations, and it's the same thing in life. And I, I'm going to cause tons of collateral damage if I. I just go on my own. I have to stop now, talk to God. Okay, direct my steps, Father. Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to be? What do you want me to do today? Mm -hmm. Before I get on the radio every day, I ask him, what do you want me to do today? What is it that you want me to do with your ministry, with your microphone? And then he tells me what to do each mm -hmm. day. And, and until I can do that with my life, it's always going to be a mess. Yeah, let's go back to your the, the car accident because that left you in pain. What thirty two years or something? No, well, I, I was I, it was seventeen years before I got it fixed. Okay. Okay, and then another fifteen years since the surgery, and then you guys prayed over me that day. Now, even though they fixed it in surgery with a laser and a camera while I watched, and that's a really interesting story, and it's in the book I wrote called "Pain Was My Friend," which you can be available at painwasmyfriend.com. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Shameless plug. Good. Uh, anyways, uh, right. free little, plug. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was a miracle what happened to me. God came to me in a vision, showed me how to get out of it. I was about to get the open surgery. He talked me into going the other way, and I could not walk when I got there. My left leg was completely not functional, okay? I mean, like I dragged it behind me as a useless appendage, okay? Wow. But on the table when it was over, the man said to me, okay, show me that it worked. And I got off the table, and I walked to him with both legs working normal for the first time in 10 years. But he also said to me, look, the nerve damage is permanent from the knee down. You'll feel nothing again mm -hmm. there ever again, okay? Mm -hmm. And you'll have no feeling whatsoever, okay? You guys prayed over me last Tuesday, and for the first time in 32 years, since the accident, 19 years old, do the math fast, I'm 51, uh, you now uh, can say, I can tell you this, I have feeling below the knee again. Wow. Yes. I have Great feeling job. in my calf. Yeah. I stubbed my toe the other day, and it hurt, and that was awesome! <laughs> It was so awesome. I did it like four more times. I'm at work and my, the producer of the show is going, dude, you're going to literally break your foot. Stop doing that. I'm like, but it feels so good. Okay? And I can stand on one leg. I could, do, I could be a flamingo now and stand there. I could not put weight on that leg either for all those years. And I just showed you, Laverne, right before we started this, that I can do that now. Yeah. That's wow. what God's capable of doing. Just like that, you suddenly can happen for you too. But it's about faith. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. God will never answer a prayer based on want or even need for that matter. It doesn't matter if you need it. That doesn't matter to him. Mm -hmm. What matters is to him, did you believe he can do it? Mm -hmm. If you believe he can move that mountain, he will move that mountain. But until you believe it, until your faith is there, the prayer's not going to get answered. God ain't an ATM <laughs> machine, just in case you're curious. Yeah. I found that out the hard way. He ain't Santa Claus neither, or genie in a bottle, or any of those other things. He wants you to believe it. When you believe it, then you're going to get it. It's that simple. I believe it now. Amen. Well, I remember when um, that sensation came back in your leg, we were praying with you uh, about the trauma, actually, of your life, and particularly that particular accident. Because, yes. see, when, when someone's in a, a traumatic experience like that, especially like a car accident, I always think of it as a, like a, a camera aperture. You know, when you go to take a picture, the camera aperture opens up, mm -hmm. the, the light in. Mm -hmm. And so when that, when that impact comes, you, everybody fear, right? Bam, yeah. fear. And what happens, the soul opens up shoo, like this. How's that go? And shoo, okay. Like this. <laughs> and just, really, just like that. Okay. Shoo. And what happens is that a light coming in darkness. And then it closes back up. And later on, we're wondering why, um, why are we having this pain? Why are we feeling these emotions? Why are we having these fears still? And, the, and there's a scripture in Isaiah that talks about um, my fear, uh, the echoes or the fear of the trembling is in my bones, mm -hmm. which are like echoes or vibrations around wow. in my bones. And that's, to me, what was happening yes. in your body was the vibrations and the, 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 the echoes, if you can think of echoes, you can think of it as like echoes, just revibrating, reverberating in your body and just causing this thing to regurgitate itself constantly. So we, we prayed with you through a prayer of releasing their cells, your muscles, your bones, your soul, from the fears of that trauma, and then I, I, your eyes started, and you, in the pain in your heart, and then um, as we were doing that, I saw your eyes get really big. <laughs> You're like, wow, <laughs> and just like that. You want me to see? Show yeah. you again? Yeah, please. <laughs> Stop. You're scaring me. 
<laughs> and uh, he says, you don't know what's going on. I go, we go, what's going on? And you started saying, I can feel I in can. my leg. But and we it, didn't know you couldn't feel in your leg. Right, and then to make sure, she pulled on the hair on my I calf. Did. She's like, did you feel that? I did. She pulled on the hair on my calf. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, buy me dinner first. <laughs> Had shorts on. <laughs> okay. Had shorts on. I did. Yeah. Okay. And I felt it. I'm like, do it again. She's like, okay. All right. Do it again. Which, all right. That's enough. That's enough. Just dubbing in the tail thing yeah. over and over. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you could, it was instant too. You know, it was, it, it was very, very much, and it has stayed there. You know, and it's amazing. It opens up a new world again to be able to feel mm -hmm. like that. I went to the beach on Sunday and stepped on the shells, and I could feel it. Wow. And I, I started to cry, you know, and I just praised God, you know, and then I shared it with those total strangers. I said, come here, you got to hear this story. And I started telling them, so what are we supposed to do, right? Praise and proclaim. So, and it wasn't something I had to think about. Naturally, I just wanted to praise them and proclaim that, hey, I can feel again. Hmm. I, I can't underestimate for you what that means to me. Yeah. You know? yeah so thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> you know, we're open for you. <laughs> praise God. Thank it's you. good to be a vessel, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Pete, you got anything else you want to tell us or say or? You know, if you're on this planet long enough, you have hurts, habits, and hang-ups. You have things that have come your way. You have traumas that you're not even aware are occurring still, reverberating, echoing in your subconscious, in your soul. Mm -hmm. Most of them occur when you're young, when the enemy knows he can get in there, when your innocence allows for him to just make an easy path into you. And then he's there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he stays there, okay? And you think that he goes, but he don't. Once he gets a foothold, he don't let go, mm -hmm. okay? And then you don't understand why everything keeps tripping up. We went back till I was, what, 11 years old. We found the first trauma I was 11 yeah. years old. We actually started at birth, but... Well, okay, but... We, 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 we had the first trauma, I think. The first one, one I could remember, okay? Mm -hmm. You got to remember, I, I partied all throughout the 80s, so I have very little in the way of memory left, okay? There's like three brain cells left. They're fighting with each other, okay? I'm told I had a really good time for the entire 80s. I'm told it was fun. Uh, but the, 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 the enemy will find those spots, again, from birth on, especially when you're young, and make that stronghold. And you're a good Christian. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, no. okay? You're a good person. You're a good Christian. You're, 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 you're a child of God, always. But the enemy is coming at you, okay? But remember a couple things, okay? He only has the power that you give him. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's do true. not give that guy the satisfaction, all right? Don't let it turn you inside out. Come to these people and get it delivered. Get it off of you, okay? Mm -hmm. And wipe it clean. And then wipe it in the blood of Jesus. And then know, again, that you are a child of God, worthy of everything that he gave everybody else. You're worthy of it and then some. Mm -hmm. God doesn't care. You remember what he said to Sam? I don't look at things in the same as you do. I don't have the same heart as man. I'm not looking at it the same way. He loves each of us the same mm -hmm. and wants a lot for all of us. And so you can't spend your life continuing to say that, oh, it just is what it is. I got to live with this. You know, this is mm -hmm. just the way it is. No, be proactive. Do something about it. Come see these people and let them do it. They're both of them are experts at what they do, okay? Susan, you're an expert too, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you out, okay? <laughs> All right, but there is ways, mm -hmm. tangible ways, that I saw with my own eyes to alleviate it, mm -hmm. to set it, get it off of you, to cast it away in Jesus' name. It's that simple. The best part for me was at the end that you took the, the tissue mm -hmm. and, you, and you wiped it on my heart. Mm -hmm. And then we took that tissue and we put it on a cross. So we took that pain, we took everything, all the torment, okay? A lot of years of torment, okay? All right, we, again, I go way back. I was the waiter at the Last Supper, okay? <laughs> Do the math on that one. And we put it on that cross. Amen. All right? He didn't die for just a few of us. He didn't rise from the dead. He didn't conquer death for just a few of us. He did it for every single one of us. Amen. So, you know, like you were saying, you know, if things are going on in your life and you think this is just the way life is or this is the way I am you know and you think you don't have to live with that mm -hmm. and it's and the lot of those things you thought were just you I thought it was just me again I, I thought yeah. it was inadequacies in my own life again mm -hmm. my living in my defects and just being not a perfect person a guy who was just was beat up a little bit in life and had made mistakes and was just not a good I didn't think I was a particularly good person you know mm -hmm. I really didn't that's all right well I do what I do but it wasn't that, okay? And you don't have to live that way. You know something's wrong, right? You know it. You feel it. You sense it in your life. 
you can sense it. And there are times where you have conscious awareness of what it is, okay? Where you can feel it and sense it. There was one night I was asleep and I, I knew it. I knew the battle was raging. It was just a couple weeks before I came to see you guys. I could hear mm -hmm. the swords. I could hear them wow. battling over my wow. head while I was sleeping wow. for my very soul. I could hear the sounds of that steel clanging into each other. Okay, and I got a cross in my hand and a Bible in the other while I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping with the Bible like this here. Okay, because I could feel it. I knew it was happening. I knew. And they knew that I was in a few weeks going to be coming to them, that I was mm -hmm. going, that I wanted it gone, that I had come to the point where I was aware of it and I wanted it gone. That's why that battle raged on right there in front of me. Mm -hmm. All right? But you want to know something interesting? Other than the fact that I knew it was going on, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you know that he's your Lord and Savior. You have no reason to fear. Mm -hmm. It says in more time in Scripture than anything else, do not fear. We all do. I'm afraid of heights. I don't even like being this tall. If I look straight down, I'm afraid, okay? <laughs> True. Okay. <laughs> I, you said that you could hear it, the clanging over your head, and that's something that I heard after I came back from a deliverance session one time, and, or something that happened to me where I recognized there was some demonic torment attached to a specific item that I had in my house, and once I got rid of it, I heard in my spirit, literally I heard it. It was like something was speaking in my ear. Oh no, now it's all torn up. The whole thing has been torn up. Everything that we've worked for in Aww. her life has been completely disrupted and they were mad. Mm -hmm. And it was like everything that has been laid in our childhood in those vulnerable areas of woundedness or the mm -hmm. family that we were brought into that you and I can't really see until the lights go on at a certain time. And then God comes in and he just does what he's going to do by cleaning house. Because he wants us free. He wants us freer than we want to be free. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot that's networked in the, in the grounds of your youth. From those vulnerable areas of brokenness and hurt that you can't see. And, you know, we've talked about this before. God can do sovereign deliverances in any parts of our lives and, and, and get around to a lot of those areas. But... You know, sometimes it takes an outside source to just be able a to train see that. outside source Amen. like you guys are. And these guys knew exactly, Kathleen and the team, I mean, they knew exactly what they were doing and looking for. They prayed for me for an hour before I got there. They prayed for me after I filled out the little form, and then they knew where to go. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like a surgeon knows right. how to mm -hmm. operate. Right. These guys knew what they were doing also. It's critically important, okay? You know, you don't go down to deliverances are us and try to pull this yeah. off, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? It's not a drive through situation, people, okay? I tried to get a deliverance by a drive through It didn't go well, and they billed my card twice. Uh, so we, we have to find the right people that know what they're yeah. doing. And they do. And that was the key. I felt at ease with you guys. I had been through other types of deliverance service in the past with people who were yelling at me and doing this and that kind of stuff and scream. I want to talk to Pete and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. That's not deliverance. That's just showing off, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that's a road show, okay? Right. That's, you know, that's not deliverance. Mm -hmm. You guys did it with peace and calm. You Amen. did it in a sweet and loving way. And you did it each step of the way telling me what was going on. Mm -hmm. You didn't talk over me like I wasn't there. You talked to me and showed me what you were doing each step of the way. So I was at ease. Mm -hmm. Plus, Laverne was holding my hand the whole time. <laughs> Everybody loves Laverne. Everybody loves Laverne. Everybody loves well, him. Pete, this has been great because I think you've shed light on, you know, a real tangible, miraculous move of God that happened for you right then. And mm -hmm. deliverance that is also ongoing in other areas that you're, that you're moving in and you're gaining the victory over. So we know that this has shed a lot of view on, on and a lot of comedy on certain areas but who who was being fun <laughs> stop it susan this is a serious subject pay attention so we're glad that you're able to join us today and like pete said you can contact any one of us our yes. our, our website will be up at the end and that that website holds mm -hmm. all three of our contact information so mm -hmm. get in touch with us if you need us we're we're only a click away and mm -hmm. we do work skype too so that's, that's all right. part of the mix so Give us a call. But before we go, we always like to end on a, on a high note of salvation. Not that you're not a high note, but a high note of salvation with Susan. She has a way of, of closing out our shows. But you, you know what? Maybe we should have Pete do the salvation. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah. All right. I'll be glad to. That? Sure. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Father God, thank you so much. I praise you for just the blessings of this day that we're, we're alive today. That's another miracle you've given us. The new, new perspective you've given me and others that they've worked with allows me to see that, that this is a miracle this day. It's a blessing. So, Father, we thank you for that. I, I just ask for continued support for these people, the work that they do. 
And for those out there that are in the darkness, that are in 19 kinds of pain and don't even know it, who are being oppressed and more by the enemy, that they come and find them too, that that oppression ends, that they're able to find the light of lights and be free of it once and for all, as I have been. That the feeling I have, I just want to share with everybody. I want everyone to hear and know your glory, that this is all through your grace, your healing grace. So, Father, I ask for a canopy of grace around everybody that's in this room and everybody that's watching. Envelop us in your grace, your healing, wounding, sobs. You just put it on us, and it feels so, so very, very good, Father. And I just thank you. I thank you so much. I worship you, and all the things that you do is just amazing. I'm still in awe of you every single day, and that's just so amazing. Father, you're just going to do it. I know it. I already speak it and declare that people listening today who heard this are going to come get their deliverance too. And that feels so very, very good. We get more back for the kingdom. We could do more for you. So, Father, I ask all this today on my knees at the foot of the cross, my face planted down in the dirt in front of it, saying, in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 And as my girlfriend who's here today says, amen and hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Well, we just, we just thank you for, for being with us this whole season. This is our grand finale show for season one. We've got 22 that we filmed. We think that's a good governmental number. We're going to stop here and see what God is going to do with the rest. The show itself has been a, a seed. We've sowed it into the ground to see what God's going to do. We are, we're not trying to build ministries. We're not trying to have a YouTube presence that's all about us. We're just This was an obedient act to give it to God. And then sit back and watch. So we're going to take some time and we're going to sit back and watch and see what he's going to do. We, we know that there's a few more shows that he wants us to film because we're waiting for some victories even here on the set that we've got. So we just thank you that you, you've hung with us for 22 shows. And we know that there's going to be more somewhere we got because he just doesn't stop. And, and we're just looking forward to seeing what that is. But we just want to close with our regular closing because we want you to go with God's view because from his perspective it's always better. Amen. 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 Woo